Great work, team. Now let's go to Anthony Sabatella, longtime friend and also a sponsor of MI Marijuana Report. Uh, so uh, one of the things I wanted to get Anthony on, he, he, he sees what all the job orders are for what the hot cannabis jobs are. And so let's start off with that. I don't know if you got a list together, Anthony, but what, what's the industry looking for right now? What kind of uh, positions are open? Well, Mike, there's uh, definitely a, uh, a myriad of uh, different opportunities, uh, both plant touching um, for those who uh, have green thumbs and uh, for those who don't. Um, you know, we just um, brought on a, a new client as of yesterday, um, located in Warren, Michigan. Uh, they are looking for an assistant lead cultivator uh, to be the right-hand man to their director of cultivation. Um, that position, obviously, uh, is hands-on. Uh, they'd be taking directives from the director of cultivation, helping managing uh, the veg and flower rooms, and um, kind of being uh, the eyes and ears um, in the grow uh, when the uh, director is away uh, or handling other business. Um, it seems to be a pretty, uh, pretty um, strong opportunity looking between uh, probably sixty-five and eighty thousand uh, dollars with benefits for that oh. position. What else you got? Um, also, just kind of hanging out in the Metro Detroit area, kind of my backyard. Uh, we have other clients uh, who are looking for uh, trim teams. Um, you know, these uh, these are great part-time positions uh, that may pop up once or twice um, a month, depending on the uh, growth cycles of uh, each of our clients. They come in. Um, trim up the crop, make sure it looks pretty right before it goes out for sale. Um, you know, even for those who, uh, you know, may not like touching the plant, Mike, um, you know, there's positions such as uh, um, janitors, uh, packagers, um, you know, because th there's a lot of things that are going on in these, uh, in these cultivation uh, facilities and also these processing facilities. Um, you know, when we take a look at the retail side, there's um, obviously managers, general managers, assistant managers, um, you know, the bud tenders, they're the first line of um, that uh, the retail consumer sees when they head into uh, provisioning centers. They're the ones who uh, greet them with a smile, help uh, showcase some of the different products, you know, whether that's concentrates, um, flour, um, edibles, so on and so forth, and really help uh, the patient um, pick out um, a product that, that does suit their needs. So uh, anybody have any questions for Anthony? Let me open it up to the team here. Go ahead and fire away. I, is the cannabis industry like probably the industry that is taking, like employing the most, I guess, like in your opinion? In Michigan, especially, I would see that I would definitely say there's an uptick in uh, in the size of uh, our industry. I'm trying to think of the exact figure that uh, Andrew Brisbo mentioned during the uh, MCIA uh, gala. I believe he said there's roughly thirty three thousand um, em uh, employed here in the industry, hmm. uh, and that number is only going up, Jamie. You know, as different companies come online, gain their licensing, opening up. Uh, facility one, two, you know, if they're loom, you know, 30, 40, 300, we're at whenever they're uh, looking to stop. Um, so, you know, there's great opportunity for people to, um, you know, jump in with two feet, uh, look to transition from um, general industry into uh, something that's uh, a little bit more fun, we'll say, you know, but definitely, definitely hard work, you know. Um, what I see, um, you know, is sometimes a, a pitfall in the industry is, uh, you know, our consumers, they, they, they feel that, you know, they may love a job in the cannabis industry, but uh, when they get in there and they have to roll up their sleeves, you know, it is actually hard work, you know, we don't get to sit around, uh, you know, rolling up joints, listening to Bob Marley all day. Uh, you know, Aww. it is, it, it is uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, it is hard work. So, um, you know, some people do get burnt out. You know, I do see a lot of turnover in uh, some of the entry level positions, such as uh, trimmers, packagers, uh, assistant grow techs. Um, but, you know, for those who uh, do have some experience uh, and really do want to put their best foot forward, 
uh, it, it can be a career for people. And, uh, you know, that's where we like to see uh, and kind of fit in the middle and find those uh, businesses and those um, applicants and uh, see how we can uh, help both of those, uh, those groups grow. I am often approached by people, especially on social media, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, by people that are interested in making the transition into the cannabis space. They see that they have some qualifications around maybe retail, around plant medicine and and they or health and wellness, and they see that crossover and they see an opportunity. What advice would you have for those people if they're wanting to make that transition? Jump in, jump in with two feet. Uh, what I notice is probably one of the key characteristics is a positive attitude and uh, maintaining a strong ambition. Uh, you know, this is a new industry. Um, you know, there's a lot of misnomers um, in the space. I mean, everything I learned in the first year, I uh, kind of got in the cannabis space. I learned in year two, it was completely wrong. So um, definitely, um, you know, Try to be a student, um, learn as much as you can about the plant, about the plant properties, about uh, the chemistry, but also uh, about the operations, you know, whether that's on the processing side, whether that is learning new machines as a, um, as a safety uh, compliance lab, um, or even uh, as a secure transporter. Um, you know, they, uh, they're not plant touching, but, you know, obviously they're, they're on the road 24 seven, making sure, uh, you know, products stay on the shelf. Dan or, oh, go ahead, Rick. I see you unmuted. Go ahead. Anthony, uh, uh, for a, a job service where you're basically connecting job app, uh, look seekers with job havers, boy, that was really an awkward way to say that, uh, who pays? I mean, it, it, it's it's curious. Is that the, the person that hires the folks? Is that the one that, that bears the burden of, uh, of paying you for the service? Yes. So um, for applicants and uh, prospects, we have no fee. We're here to help and kind of be uh, that funnel and that connection into, uh, into the space. You know, the way I look at it is it makes sense for um, an applicant to submit one resume to THC123 and allow us to send that resume to four, five, six different uh, locations uh, instead of them uh, beating, uh, you know, uh, beating the streets and uh, trying to uh, get into these different facilities. Um, you know, it is also uh, tough to see the to uh, find and uh, gain contacts with these different business owners. They're extremely busy um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people, they don't know where to look. So, you know, we try to be uh, that frontward facing um, group to help uh, uh, kind of do the legwork for different companies. Um, on the backside, you know, businesses reach out to us. Um, you know, like I said, that uh, group out in Warren was looking for an assistant cultivator. They reach out to us. We then provide different applicants, their questionnaires, their resumes set up. Uh, in-person interviews, Zoom interviews, phone interviews, um, and then uh, let the uh, cream rise to the top, so to speak. Mr. Sparrow, do you have anything? You're muted. Oh, there you go. Well, you're still muted. <laughs> I see your lips moving, you know, so go ahead. I'm back. Hello, okay. Anthony. Um, Hi, Dan. There, there, there's a ton of misconceptions in this industry. Um, and and the, the number one thing in the top of my head always is the THC percentage. Um, there needs to be a huge education piece to this, not only for consumers, but obviously for the people that work in these places. And this industry being so new, are you finding a lot of people approaching THC 123 as an avenue from other states? Um, I would say yes. Um, we do have a, uh, a large grouping of out-of-state applicants, especially on the cultivation side. Uh, you know, a lot of people who have, uh, you know, cut their teeth in the uh, Colorado market out in California, um, looking for new opportunities here in Michigan. Also, um, different companies, since we do uh, staffing and recruiting, we also do back office HR support. Uh, that includes payroll, tax management, employee benefits, workers' compensation, kind of the uh, stuff that goes with running a business that doesn't make business owners money. Um, so for the companies looking to expand 
from out of state into the Michigan market, and then also from the Michigan market into out of state, uh, we can help them grow there and uh, stay online and, and stay compliant with the different labor laws that um, vary from state to state. Awesome, thank you. Awesome. And one of the things I know, because we've had this conversation is lots of people want to get into the industry because they you know, are consumers, and then you figure that's easily transferable into being a business employee, but you discover a lot of them just don't have the background or experience to get the job done, right? I would say so. That's where, uh, you know, I, I implore people to uh, kind of be students, you know, look to learn, uh, you know. Uh, you know, I sometimes I walk into a dispensary and, uh, you know, I see that bud tender and, uh, you know, he may not have uh, the education, unfortunately, you know, he's pointing out the, uh, the uh, flower with the highest THC percentage, you know, I ask a couple questions about it. And the only response I receive is it's fire, bro. And, uh, you know, that only goes, uh, that only goes so far, you know, and, you know, that's where it makes sense to have uh, that bud tender in that position, especially if they're, uh, consumer facing, you know, to learn a little bit more about the cannabinoids, learn the difference between THC, CBD, CBN, and the other cannabinoids that are out there and to see what kind of properties those have. Um, because obviously, um, you know, people use cannabis for different reasons, you know, whether that's for appetite, um, you know, increased appetite, appetite suppressant, whether that's for sleep, anxiety, you know, there's a myriad of different reasons. And, you know, the more you know about the plant and the chemical structure, the more um, our industry will be able to help people. What, uh, what differentiates your retention rate from these uh, potential um, businesses from going on Indeed? Are, are, are your people more likely to stay? You know, we've helped dozens, hundreds of these companies open up and, and we've helped in that area, you know, as far as the HR and getting people staffed up. Um, but the overturn of employment is horrible in this industry. And is your retention rate that much better? Um, I would say that uh, we are uh, percentages higher than, uh, than the average. Uh, we do offer, um, you know, because we do see uh, that being an, an issue, especially in the entry level positions, Dan, um, and we know that turnover is going to occur. Um, that is why we offer the THC 123 guarantee um, as staffing uh, and recruitment services in the state of Michigan. The state does require a 60 D, a 60 day guarantee. Uh, for those placements, uh, we go 50% further and provide them uh, with a 90 day guarantee. Um, if somebody does turn over during that time or is uh, terminated for a cause, we will backfill that position for free. So uh, what we provide is not just a warm body, but a solution to their uh, labor and their labor needs. Well, thank you for everything you do. And uh, the, the industry definitely needs some education piece to it. It can't be in the top 100 people in cannabis in the state of Michigan can know everything. Um, there's, there, there's a lot of things that need to be learned and or taught. And I don't know exactly who's going to do that, but there's a huge gap in Michigan. Um, a lot of these employees come into these shops, like you mentioned, and think they're going to twist pre-rolls and listen to Bob Marley. And that is not the case. This mm -hmm. is actual work and you have to be you know, precise and mistakes are costly. And so people really need to understand the seriousness of this, even though this is something very lighthearted and, and, and fun. On the Absolutely. I definitely agree uh, with you, Dan, um, you know, especially since, uh, you know, this is such a hyper compliant industry and, uh, you know, we've already seen companies have their licenses suspended uh, for, um, employee actions, um, you know, and uh, that's uh, that's some of the behavior that w that we're looking to curb. That's where uh, through our recruitment process, we try to get top tier candidates, and uh, with those top tier candidates, we look to uh, provide them with a career and and not just a job. And uh, you know, I can't do that alone. THC one two three can't do that alone. But the uh, prospects and the business owners um, and everybody else uh, who is fighting the good fight for Team Green. Um, the, it's going to be a, a concerted effort to uh, kind of get this uh, this industry from ground floor up to the next level. 
And I think it's really important getting back to the consumer facing. And I know this is one of Rick Thompson's topics too, is because he has a strong retail background. There's a lot of people coming into the adult use market that maybe don't have any real previous experience with CBD products or cannabis products, and they don't really know what they want. And so if you come into a shop and like you say, it just says it's fire, bro, <laughs> that doesn't really help them very much. Now do it. So uh, what do you think, Rick? Oh, you're muted. There we go. Yeah. Uh, the fact is we do have a, a knowledge gap between consumers versus uh, retailers. But I think it's it's also important to recognize that someone who has a, senior, a serious interest in the industry, probably more valuable than someone who just maybe wants to try out this dispensary job and see what it's all about. If you believe in the plant, if you believe in cannabis, and if you're willing to learn, that's a valuable employee. Now, getting them to stick, that sometimes is a, a matter of compensation and the package that you're offering those folks. I see uh, stores with a lot of turnover, maybe not offering the most competitive wages, maybe not making people feel like they belong as part of a family, or maybe they're just a, a, a center that turns and burns people because they really don't care about their employees. I think we need to put more of an emphasis on an employer education system as opposed to a potential employee education situation my experience in retail has been, if you have an interest and you have a good management team, you can make almost anybody stick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, the next piece I really see once uh, the industry um, kind of balances out per se, um, is definitely the, uh, the employment packages, you know, um, major medical dental vision, you know, are these offerings from these facilities. You know, if your uh, if your competitor down the street is offering these type of packages and a um, and a competitive wage, you know they're going to take a couple all stars from from their competitors. Um, you know, and those are the uh, type of products and services uh, we look to get out to our uh, our clients. You know, whether that's um, you know major medical, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, HMO, PPO plans. MetLife, Dental, Vision, um, you know, we really see that as uh, as the next step to uh, kind of create that sticky employment uh, relationship. Yeah, a friend of mine in Grand Rapids had a really popular restaurant, and he had employees that stuck with him for a long time because he did provide all these benefits as well as a good wage. I mean, he had people working for him for 15, 20 years. That's really unheard of in the restaurant industry. And so I think that like what Rick said is, is the employers have to understand correctly now and what the great resignation, I just read a stat yesterday that four and a half million people quit their jobs in the fourth quarter because they didn't want to work for whoever they were working for. And so are you seeing that too? Are, are people saying, gosh, I really like to get in the industry, but I need benefits. I mean, I definitely see that from um, applicants that are coming from um, a general industry position, you know, whether that's, um, you know, a corporate finance job and they're looking at um, CFO positions or cost accounting positions in the space, um, you know, those things matter, especially, uh, you know, when you're hiring, um, you know, let's call it a, um, a middle to, uh, you know, a middle-aged adult who has a, a family and three kids, these things matter. You know, it's a little different if you're hiring, uh, you know, a 22, 23 year old bud tender where, you know, potentially, you know, having, um, you know, a product as a, as a, you know, employee benefit that might make sense for them, but that's not going to make sense for, uh, you know, some of these other people in uh, these middle and upper management positions. Hmm. Huh. I will observe that there was just a lawsuit filed I read about recently against jars where they they accuse the management team there of being racist and homophobic and sexist. And uh, I cannot comment on any of that because I don't know any of the details and I'm not trying to throw shade on anybody. But when we have situations like that in the cannabis industry, those sort of reinforce some of people's fears about coming into the cannabis industry is that they're going to experience some of those types of negative things especially since in the cannabis industry, we've got a lot of people running businesses that have never successfully run businesses before. Bingo. So human resources and the lack of, of proper guidance on the part of management really can, can cost people uh, really good employees too. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly, Rick. Uh, you know, even, uh, you know, I've had a firsthand experience of, 
um, sexual assault, sexual harassment in this industry. And that's the stuff that we need to uh, knock out. We need to, um, we need to self-manage and, and police ourselves. Uh, you know, this industry is already underneath a microscope and, uh, you know, that's the stuff that we don't need. And, uh, you know, those um, perpetrators and those unscrupulous folk, um, they'll make a name for themselves. And, uh, you know, those are the people that I feel should be on uh, a boycott list, uh, you know, above all.